In a world where everyone seems to be on a mission to make as much profit as possible, a man named Sam Walton dared to think differently when starting his retail business. The result of this was the birth of Walmart, which turned out to be even more successful than Sam ever imagined. It was in the late 40s and early 50s that most of Arkansas, like the rest of the country in the post-war years, were full of hope. Oklahoma, in the uncertain years just after World War I, was a place of harsh extremes, long, bitter winters, and stifling hot summers. Yet for all its hardships, Oklahoma in the 20s was a place to grow and to dream. It was near the town of Kingfisher that Thomas Walton, a struggling young farmer, and his wife, Nancy Lee, started their family. And it was here that their son, Samuel Moore Walton, was born. Sam quickly learned the value of hard work and perseverance. Growing up in tough times, more commonly known simply as Sam, grew up during one of the toughest economical situations in the history of the U.S., the Great Depression. He was born on March 29, 1918, in Oklahoma, where he lived with his parents on their farm. His father, Thomas Walton, soon realized that their farm couldn't provide enough income to raise children and take care of the family. As Sam approached school age, Thomas and Nancy Lee made a wise but, at the time, difficult decision. They sold all their personal property in a public sale, except for Sam's mare, Trix and moved to Springfield, Missouri. Sam completed his freshman year at Shelbina, and in 1933, with the economy gradually improving, the family moved to Columbia, Missouri. Sam served as a captain in the Army Intelligence Corps from 1942 to 1945. It was after Sam was on active duty that he married Helen Robson of Claremore, Oklahoma the daughter of Hazel and L.S. Robson, a prominent lawyer, rancher, and banker. Sam and Helen have lived in Bentonville since 1950, and there they have raised their four children, Jim, Rob, John, and Alice. And as the economy shifted from military emphasis to one that was consumer-driven, the feeling was anything was possible. It was in this northwest Arkansas community of Bentonville that Sam and Helen Walton purchased Luther Harrington's Variety Store and demonstrated their confidence in the future and in the people of this area. It was 1950 and they opened the first Walton 5 and 10, a Ben Franklin franchise with a Walton name. Sam had purchased the Bentonville store after operating his Ben Franklin franchise in Newport, Arkansas. He and Helen had been there for five years, and they were quite successful. So successful, in fact, that the man who leased it to them wanted it back. During the same time, Bud Walton had opened up his own Ben Franklin in Versailles, Missouri. By 1959, Bud, Sam, and their entire family owned nine franchise stores. In 1962, after becoming Ben Franklin's largest franchisee, Sam opened his first large discount store under the Walmart name in Rogers, Arkansas. It was less than one-fifth the size of today's average Walmart and had only 25 employees. Its volume and promising future led Sam to make a trip to the Ben Franklin offices in Chicago. He went there with an idea. Don Sutterquest, then a data processing officer for Ben Franklin, recalls Sam's visit. His purpose was to share with him them this idea that he had of taking a discount store and putting it in a small rural community. He said, I've already opened a store in Rogers, Arkansas that I would consider a discount store. And I'm convinced that there's a lot more business 
in those smaller communities than what most people believe. So I would like you to consider selling me merchandise for a discount store at a lower price so that we can together uh, try this new venture of serving the rural communities with discount stores. Well, after a morning of discussion, they told him they just really didn't see a future. And, and besides that, they couldn't offer him merchandise at a lower price than what they were selling to the Ben Franklin franchisees. Undeterred, Sam continued to pursue his vision and two years later, in 1964, he opened his second Walmart in Harrison, Arkansas. It was anything but a smooth opening. Here's how David Glass, then president of a drugstore retaining chain, remembers the store upon his first visit. Uh, when I saw the Harrison, Arkansas store, uh, I, I thought to myself, this is, this is absolutely the worst discount store or retail store that I've ever seen. Uh, Sam bought a couple of truckloads of watermelons and he'd stacked them up across the front of the store. Uh, he had donkey rides for the kids out on the parking lot and what he didn't anticipate is that the temperature was about 110 degrees in Harrison that day and the watermelons began to pop and that watermelon juice began to run all over the parking lot and uh, the donkeys did what donkeys do and uh, and sort of tracked through all that. You can imagine what it looked like. The thing I didn't realize about Sam though and the people who were involved in those early days in Walmart is that they had a quality that I haven't seen in many people or in many companies and that was that there was never a day went by that they didn't improve something. And improve Walmart did. Within another five years, Sam and his associates had proved the doubters wrong. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now, and be blessed.